after the election, if and when she gets reelected, she's going to be super liberal. <laughs> Maybe she wins by 20 points and she's like, okay, maybe I can be a little more progressive. Yeah. If the country moved further to the left, yeah. she would move to the left. Yeah. Like, I think if, if we had a Democratic Senate, um, she would vote for more, more policies that you see more Democrats. Yeah. She's like, the stuff that I'm being a little safe on now, yeah. she'd probably be a little more a little bolder about it. If, if there's a blue wave in, uh, in November, I'm sure that our voting record will shift a lot. We'll shift away from the president's election. I don't like that you took the Obama poster down. Oh, that one was that's my that's one of my favorite pictures ever. <laughs> I know it's because the press was here. Okay. We'll take it down. Yeah. I mean, uh, the thing with politicians and other politicians. After the election, if and when she gets reelected, she's going to be super liberal. <laughs> Primaries in North Dakota are about a month away, and incumbent Senator Heidi Heitkamp is largely considered one of the most vulnerable Democrats running for re-election. And I'm not going to be the person who um, makes a decision based on whether I get six more years in Washington, D.C. Maybe she wins by 20 points, and she's like, okay, maybe I can be a little more progressive. If the country moves further to the left, yeah. she will move to the left. So she's doing really good stuff. She's like, the stuff that I'm being a little safe on now, yeah. she'd probably be a little more a little bolder about it. We get the same back, but he's got a, that a impeachment we're looking at. With the midterms less than two weeks away, the fight for control of the Senate is a battle royale. We've seen in places like Missouri and Tennessee that politicians are willing to say and do anything to get elected in order to arrive at this place the Senate Hart Office Building in Washington, D.C. Candidates, and sometimes this come out of their own staffers' mouths, will admit to lying, obfuscating, and pulling a bait and switch on voters doing the exact opposite of the things they campaign for. Senator Heidi Heidkamp of North Dakota is no exception. We'd like you to watch carefully as her own digital director admits that once she gets elected, she's gonna do something that's much different than what she is telling the voters right now. Like it's an election year for her. Yeah, she's being careful about pissing at people off. And what's funny is that she said basically like after the election, if and when she gets reelected, she's gonna be super liberal. Super liberal? <laughs> yeah, like because she doesn't want to run it. Like she doesn't want to be in the Senate for life. She wants to just do good work while she can. Yeah. And then that's it. So I don't know if she'd run for a third term. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a long time. Yeah. Um, so she wants to, if she gets elected, what did you say? She wants to be really liberal? Yeah, she's joked about oh. this, but she's like, the stuff that I'm being a little safe on now, yeah. she'd probably be a little more, a little bolder about it. Overton says Senator Heidkamp is masking her progressive views in an effort to secure re-election. But once she wins, look out. Campaign workers in her Fargo office agree. They say to get the moderate vote, she needs to run away from Obama and anything else that paints her as a liberal. I don't like that you took the Obama poster down. Oh, that one was that's my that's one of my favorite pictures ever. <laughs> I know it's because the press was here. Right. Oh, when Trump was here, the day that Trump was, we had press in here because we had a lot of volunteers. Oh, okay. Take it down with them. Why? Yeah, it's just better to not have to deal with. Okay. He's not coming to uh, to uh, campaign for us either. Oh, it's why not? The why not? Yeah, I won't on I, from what I can tell, it's that uh, you know it's a very Republican. You know I was, yeah, I was gonna say I bet or like it would be detrimental to Helping it's us either. It's probably because yeah, it's just like. People don't want her to be a, like a Democrat, Democrat, or you know, like they want her to be moderate, and so you don't want like a super liberal president. I'm not bothered that. Like, well, I, I mean, guess there's... maybe the association wouldn't actually be beneficial to her. Yeah, that sucks. It's the same. It's the same thing with the. Uh... With Claire, they explained to me, no, we're just trying to keep it on the down low, you know, because it it makes people. Does it pull well here? 
Just like Senator Claire McCaskill in Missouri, Senator Heidkamp is deliberately vague on President Trump's wall so as to not alienate moderate voters. So don't say she yeah, I, I, doesn't support the wall. Yeah, just I would say she supports effective border security that includes barriers in some places, but wh- whatever, like folks on the ground think hey, is effective. Okay, because I guess there's ads or something oh, yeah. that no, are like making people go, she doesn't support the wall, and yeah. if she does, or do, I don't know, you know, so I had to ask. So don't yeah. say that she doesn't. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because we want them to kind of think that she does. Unfortunate people that so don't really understand that there's more nuance right. there than just, right. <laughs> you either are going to build a 50-foot wall, or you're like, everyone should come. Right. <laughs> Is, is Heidi a yes on the wall or what? Quick questions. I keep getting on the wall. She was right here in North Dakota. Do you think the, you have some uh, the border wall? Trump's border wall? Oh. So she's going to vote against the wall. I would assume so. Prescott Robinson, who works in Senator Heidkamp's office in Washington, says Heidkamp works very hard on her moderate image. Do you think that she's just like working with Trump for now because it's like sort of a platform to help her? I mean, I would say you, you would, if, if the country moved further to the West, yeah. she would move to the West. Yeah. Like, I think if, if we had a Democratic Senate, um, she would vote for it. More, more policies that you see more Democrats. Yeah. I mean, the fact that she works with him, like, it just confuses me. So. I mean, if, if, if there's a blue wave in, uh, in November, I'm sure that our voting record will shift a lot. We'll shift away from the president's yeah. Because then the people that are controlling the bills going to the floor, like, if, if the Democrats take the Senate and Chuck Schumer is the one introducing bills, She's probably, you know, and then you're going to, one, you're going to see have Trump voting, opposing all of those bills just because it's a Yeah. And then, and then, but she'll be able to support those bills. She'll have more influence over what bills are on the floor. Yeah. She, and she's more important to what specifically they talk about. Uh, and she, what she wanted to do is partially because Trump won the state by 20 points, so she doesn't want to be like, no, I'm going to say no against all his policies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially because immigration is something that looks like Cameron's home. Yeah. Um, she was like, I'm going to like hold off for a moment. And then once she did a little more, I mean, once, once it got passed through kind of the office and the ledge aids, we were able to take a look at it and yeah. what was going on. And then she was able to see how the people from her state wanted her to support on it. Yeah. I mean, they, one of the more interesting things about working in her office is she is very centrist. So, like, everybody, all the staffers I've talked to are actually fairly left wing. Maybe she wins by 20 points and she's like, okay, maybe I can be a little more progressive. Yeah. And it also depends on, like, if she starts supporting something and then, and then the calls come streaming in, maybe she goes back. I mean, the, the thing with politicians is they're politicians. Yeah. Uh, Back in Heidkamp's field office, there was a lot of talk about impeachment, but only behind closed doors. You know, it's time. You know, we, we get this, we get this in him back. He's gonna have some pressure on him. He's gonna start acting right, or he's gonna, you know, he's gonna face some consequences. I don't think he knows how to act so, right. Well, he'll he'll know that he's got a uh, that a uh, impeachment word looking at him because especially with everything that's going on with Cohen and, and Ben. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Senator Heidi Heidkamp, like many red state Democrats, have to woo moderate voters while also playing to her base of progressive voters. It's about saying one thing to one group and saying another thing to another group. See, it's all about winning at any cost, even if that cost is the truth. But there can only be one policy that she chooses once she gets elected. And at least now, her own staffers have shined some light onto which choice Senator Heidi Heidkamp will make after Election Day. Reporting from Washington, D.C., this is James O'Keefe with Project Veritas Action.